Good morning, folks, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is June the 9th, 2023. I'm going to give you an update on the tomatoes and got a couple of subjects to talk about real quick. Don't have a lot of time. Uh, one of them is blossom end rot, and uh, this can happen very early on in your tomatoes. Uh, most of you know that everybody uh, tells you you got to put some calcium in the soil if you're getting blossom end rot. That's only one factor. If you are low in calcium, yes, that will be a problem. The main factor is lack of water. If you are fluctuating on your soil moisture, every time you get dry, those little tiny hair roots cannot take the calcium up. And then when you water, of course, they go back. But what develops in between all that is uh, blossom end rot. And the best way to keep from getting blossom end rot is to keep the soil evenly moist. And uh, one of my county agents told me, and I kind of like his uh, description, he said the best way to do that is the finger test. He said stick the, your finger down in the soil next to the plant. If it's moist, you're okay. If it's dry, you need to add some water. And, but the other way is, and I've done this for a number of years, but I'm not this year, is you use an aerometer. And this works in soil tension. There's a liquid you put in here, and you uh, pump this thing up. We got a special pump. You pump it up. You pull the needle over. It creates a vacuum. All right, then I take a half-inch steel rod, make a hole in the ground down about 12, 14 inches, wherever you think your moisture zone is. Stick this in there. This has a ceramic end on it. And then what will happen is when the soil gets dry, it pulls some of the liquid from here out, and you'll notice a reading on this right here. And for me, I like to keep the reading between 0 and 20. Uh, now... There's a lot of tricks to this. I'm not going to go into it. You can uh, read it on, uh, go online, find the company. Uh, it's uh, Aerometer, and they're in Riverside, California. That ought to tell you something. But uh, it, it does work. Uh, but there's a, you've got to place it in the positioning of it. With tomatoes, is a little critical. But this year, I'm just going to use the finger test, try to keep them evenly moist, and I think that I'm going to be okay. You don't want to overwater. If you're doing that, you're flushing out some of your nutrients, but you definitely do not want to underwater. I'll tell you a quick story. Don't ever buy Bella Rosa tomatoes. They were bad about cracking. Uh, one summer, about mid-July, I had to go out of town for a couple, three days. I watered before we left. I ought to have done a good job. When we came back, I noticed the ground was pretty dry, so I made the mistake and I just gave them a lot of water. Well, of course, that immediately makes the tomatoes suck up all the water and they started cracking at the top. For me, those are okay if you're going to can, but they're not usable for retail sales. So, uh, it's a wonderful tomato, but I just never grew it again. Another thing I want to hit on real quick is, uh, is the leaves on the bottom of your plants. Now, I'm planting early, so I've got some cold nights come in, and we use row covers, but there's a condition called biotic and abiotic. The word a always means no, like uh, those people who are a millennial, that means no millennium. Uh, abiotic means life. So you get these funky looking little leaves down at the bottom and it basically they're abiotic which means is they're useless to you. Now I've got too many plants to go in there and cut those leaves out. I just leave them. They don't bother me one single bit at all. But you'll, uh, if you don't know what it is, you're thinking fungus or nutritional or something. But it's the very bottom leaves. As the temperatures uh, re come more to normal, then you'll see these, uh, that condition disappear. Uh, now we're getting into uh, summer here. Lord, we've had some hot weather. We had 94 degrees, I believe it was the day before yesterday. Way early for uh, early part of June, but the plants are really sucking the water up, so I'm giving them quite a bit of water right now. So uh, let me take my camera. I'm just going to walk down one side of this tunnel from the outside. You can see a little better. Show you how they're loading up. Uh, most of you growers, you get to the point you're wondering when are they going to get ripe, when are they going to get ripe. Well, I planted these uh, April the 15th and April the 16th, and so we're coming up on 60 days, a little bit more. 
Yeah, this is the 72 day tomato from transplant. So you can see I'm pretty much on schedule by the end of June to start getting some ripe tomatoes. Uh, it'll be gradual and then you'll get to the peak of your season. But uh, y'all hang on and let me uh, grab this thing. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna show you this condition. Look right, let me zoom in. Those leaves right there, they've got uh, green veins and yellow between them. That is absolutely nothing, excuse me, to be concerned with. Uh, it happens. If I had time, I would cut them out and get better airflow, but I do not with all the other stuff I've got going on. But you can see the tomato load. I'm gonna back up just a little bit. And they just kind of walk down here. This is just one side. There's more tomatoes. There's some pretty good clusters right there. Now there's a fellow from Oklahoma that I have uh, chatted with on the internet just a little bit that uh, thinks that uh, and thinks that determinate tomatoes only get about waist high. Well, I don't know what he's doing wrong, but that is absolutely not true. I raise only determinate, which means at some point they have determined to quit growing. And, uh, but I can get, uh, these, these will grow five foot tall. I mean, I, you can kind of look here and you can see my stakes. And uh, right now, a lot of these are four foot tall. Uh, some of them are get, starting to get close to uh, shoulder height, just a few of them. Let me walk down a little bit further. Starting to get some decent size on. There's a cluster there. That thing, that's a sucker that branched off that I really don't want, but I'm not going to take it out now. Okay, and let's focus right here. There's some... Yeah, there's some nice tomatoes right there. This uh, cultivar here, Florida 7514, produces a lot of 12-ounce uh, tomatoes, uh, and I'll get some bigger than that. Uh, but I'd say 10 or 12 ounces is really easy for this plant to produce. As you know, a lot of these tomatoes are hidden underneath. What I like about this plant, if you'll notice, really good leaf coverage. That helps protect them from the hot sun. Of course, I've got a uh, shade cloth on top of this thing. It's a 47% shade cloth, which will uh, keep some of the hot rays and keep the tunnel a little bit cooler. Uh, tomatoes need at least six hours sunlight a day. So if you've got a 12 hour day and you put on a 50% shade cloth, you're still gonna get your six hours, but that is what they need for optimum production. You can raise them in a lot less, but you won't get the production. So uh, as you can see, there's still quite a few flowers blooming and there will be for a while. I just fertilized them. All right, let's see. Yeah, there's some flowers right there. You see, there's still a lot of tomatoes to put on. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for today. God bless. Thanks for watching. See you later.